Hey everyone, welcome to our way too early 2024 Florida State Seminoles predictions video. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at the 2024 football schedule for FSU and we are going to try to predict which games we think they're going to win, which games we think that they are going to lose. And we will be doing this the whole season for every single college football team going over all of their 2024 football schedules and predicting the outcome to every single schedule. And then once the season Season starts every single week for the for college football and for the NFL. We go game by game and we break down the spreads, money lines, and the over under. So go ahead, hit that like button and subscribe. Now, when it comes to Florida State, obviously last season they finished 14 and 1. A lot of people were upset that they were not in the playoffs. Jordan Travis got hurt at the very end of the season. He was in the top five for the Heisman up to the point that he got hurt. Florida State last year, they were number nine in pass defense. They had a top 15 defense. They had a top 20 offense. So they were one of the most rounded teams from last year. So Mike Norvell really has this thing on track so far for the last two to three seasons. They've been recruiting top 10 every single year. But more importantly, Mike Norvell has been working the transfer portal top 10 for the last three seasons. So he's really built a strong foundation here. But this is not the 2023 Florida State Seminoles. Just to give props to that team, that was a very talented team, and they were loaded with talent. Obviously, they had Jordan Travis there at the quarterback position. He was a great quarterback. They had Trey Benson at running back. They had Keon Coleman. They had Johnny Wilson at wide receiver. There was a lot of playmakers. Those were the leaders on the offensive side of the ball. They had verse on defense. But all those guys are gone. They're not on the 2024 team. They have DJU transferring over as the quarterback from Oregon State. Had a very strong season last year. But this is his first time in this program. And there's going to be a lot of first-year starters stepping into those roles this year. So don't expect for them to just pick up where they were last year. Now, that's not to say that they are going to take a big step back. But we just have to be cognizant that those guys that laid that foundation, they're not there this year. So we are breaking in some fresh starters that are going to have a two, three-year run where they will build back up to that. Because like we mentioned, Norvell set the foundation. But let's go ahead and get things started looking at the schedule and trying to predict. So Florida State kicked things off. Saturday, August 24th, they have one of the earlier games this season. They'll be playing the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And for some reason, this game is in Dublin, Ireland. So it's definitely not home field advantage for either team. Georgia Tech had a pretty strong season last year. I think they finished 7-5 or five or 8-4. and four. So they had a pretty strong year. They were not picked to even finish that well. They played really well at the quarterback position on offense. Defense played well when they needed to play well. So props to the coach because he's rebuilding that program from where they were. But Georgia Tech should not be able to compete with Florida State. They have DJU at quarterback. He's obviously been through a lot of games. They're going to have young talent coming in at every single position that they need. They are going to have guys like Portier, Williams stepping in, uh, Benson, Brown. So they're going to have new players stepping in at running back, wide receiver, that should be able to pick up where they were last year. And Georgia Tech just does not have the talent to be able to keep up with them. So look for Florida State to win this game. And I'm going to say that they win it pretty convincingly. They'll have a very good showing for game one. I'm going to say that they win probably like a 37 to 20, and they start out 1-0. and oh. Then they move back to the States, Monday, September 2nd, versus the Boston College Eagles. This is a team that, you know, was somewhat competitive last year, but they had six or seven wins. They were a bowl team. They were running the ball a lot with Castellanos, but they have a new head coach. They have Bill O'Brien stepping in as the head coach. He's been trying to work the portal, trying to get some guys over there, but there's a massive, massive talent disparity between these two teams. So look for Florida State to come back to the States. They're at home this game. This is their opening game at home. They're going to beat Boston College up. I'm going to say that they win this game probably like a 42-17 game, and they're now 2-0. and oh. Then they have a bye week. They've been doing a lot of traveling. They went to Ireland, back to the States, so they have a week to rest. That'll be the week of September 7th. And then they come right back Saturday, September 14th, versus the Memphis Tigers. This game is also in Tallahassee. Memphis, although they're not a power four team, they could easily be a lower tier power four team. This is not a bad program in any way whatsoever. They are a perennial 
nine to 10 win team. Do not overlook this game. They've been really competitive. They've been ranked a couple times in the last five years. So they can definitely beat power four teams. That would not be surprising. But Florida State, they can't lose this one. They are at home playing a really good out-of-conference team here. Look for Florida State to get the win to move to 3-0. and Florida State's probably going to win this one, I'm going to say, like a 37 to 17 game or 17 to 20 game. Very comfortable win. Very good showing on both sides of the ball. Florida State's now 3-0. and Then they follow that one up Saturday, September 21st versus one of the new teams to the ACC. So obviously, we have Stanford coming in. We have Cal coming in. We have SMU coming in. And the California Golden Bears, they won our six or seven games last season. They actually were pretty decently competitive in the Pac-12, led mainly by their running game. They were running for about 220 rushing yards per game. They had one of the best rushing attacks in the country last year. They had some pretty close games versus a couple top 25 teams. So they could potentially keep this close, you know, but they're traveling completely across the country from California all the way to Tallahassee to play Florida State. Very odd the way the conferences have been realigned, but I think Florida State's going to dominate this one. Even though they lost players on defense, I think their defense might not be as good as last year. They had a really good defense last year, but they're going to be really competitive and they're still going to have easily a top 15, top 20 defense again this season. And they're going to shut down the pass. If Cal tries to run on Florida State, you're running right into the strength of this team and they're going to shut that crap down. So I have Florida State winning this one pretty well, mainly due to their defense winning probably about a 30 to 13 game. So a dominant win here, moving to four and oh. And then the next week, another new team to the ACC Saturday, September 28th. We have the SMU Mustangs and this game is at SMU. Don't laugh at SMU. Rhett Lashley, he's had back-to-back top 10 transfer portal classes. They're now in a Power 5 conference. They gave up a lot to move into the ACC. They had Stone at quarterback last season. He got hurt, could not play the conference championship and bowl game. But this guy can throw for 4,000 yards. Rhett Lashley's going to light it up. His team actually, surprisingly, had a top 25 offense and a top 25 defense last year. A lot of people don't know that because they weren't watching the SMU Mustangs football But this team, I've said it for years, they're going to succeed at the power level. They will have absolutely no problems competing in the ACC. I see this team as a 10-win season type type team every single year in the Power Four. They're going to have no problems, and they're going to be recruiting well because a lot of those Texas recruits are going to start looking at them now that they're at the Power Four level. They have wide receivers, running backs, quarterback, This game could easily be an SMU win, but I'm going to have Florida State winning a really close one, probably a 30, well, I'm going to go with a 30 to 27 win. Very close win. They get the win, again, based off of their defense, getting a stop at the very end of the game in the fourth quarter, and Florida State is now 5-0. But just put the alert out there. SMU could easily upset Florida State, so do not overlook this game, but I have them winning it 5-0. Next game, Saturday, October 5th, the Clemson Tigers. Clemson's looking for some revenge here. They want revenge on Florida State for taking the ACC from them. And they also want revenge on DJU. Don't forget, DJU was a five-star quarterback, went to Florida State. He was there for, what, two or three seasons. Then he transferred to Oregon State. Now he's transferring to FSU. So Clemson's definitely familiar with DJU. They know his strengths. They know his weaknesses. But DJU is also familiar with Clemson and Dabble Sweeney. He knows his strengths. He knows his weaknesses. Clemson, they had a top five defense last season. Top five. They lost some players to the draft, but they have a top 10 defense every single year. So don't expect for them to drop out of the top 10. Their strength, just like Florida State, is going to be found on their D-line. They're going to get after it. They're going to get after DJU. There's not going to be much time for him to scramble, and they're going to be collapsing the pocket pretty quickly. That's where they're going to be good at. If you want to beat Clemson, you've got to be able to try to test them vertically through the air. You're not going to run on them. It just is what it is. Clemson's issue has been their offense. Yes, they have Kate Klubnick. He was a five-star quarterback, but so far he hasn't lived up to that potential. Supposedly, you know, they're, they're getting a few more playmakers in at the wide receiver position. Look at my Clemson breakdown video if you want to see how I think that they will do this year. I think they'll be a very good team. Um, 
them and Florida State are kind of in a similar position this year. I'm going to go. So this game is in Tallahassee. I'm actually going to go with Clemson getting the win here. I would not be surprised if they're a slight favorite. If Florida State is the favorite, it's going to be a one or two point favorite. It's going to be a really close game. I'm going to put my faith in Clemson's due to beat Florida State. And that defense, I think, is going to get them to keep the game close. One possession game, the whole game probably won't be decided till the fourth quarter. And it's going to be the offense that gets a score at the very end or a field goal when they need to, and they win the game. So exactly the way it did not go last season, it will fall for them this year. Clemson's going to beat this one. Florida State's going to fall to 5-1, and one, but they could still be a top 10, top 15 team as of right now. Then they have a bye week October 12th, so they are coming off that loss. They can lick their wounds, found out what things didn't work for them, and try to get everything back on track going into the second half of the season, going into nonstop conference play. They followed that loss up October 18th, first the Duke Blue Devils. Mike Elko, he's gone. He's now the head coach at Texas A&M, and Leonard is also now the quarterback at Notre Dame. Florida State will be seeing him later, but Blue Duke Devils, they have Malik Murphy transferring over at quarterback from Texas. They have Manny Diaz, the old Miami coach, as the head coach now. He was previously just the defensive coordinator at Penn State, led them to a top 10 defense. Duke is going to have a good defense, very physical defense, but Manny Diaz has completely retool, overhaul the roster. They're just not going to be there this year. So the talent gap is going to be too far. Look for Florida State to get things back on track here and to put it on Duke following that loss to Clemson. I have them winning probably a 37-14 to 14 game and moving to 6-1. and one. Then... Saturday, October 26th, another rivalry game, another ranked matchup versus the Miami Hurricanes, who just cut to, they just keep getting guys in the transfer portal. They have Cam Ward transferring over at quarterback. They have Martinez transferring as the number two running back over from Oregon State. He's not going to be the head running back. He ran for 1,200 last season. They have Brown transferring over at wide receiver. He was the number two wide receiver in the transfer portal this year. This team had a top 35 offense last year, had a top 35 defense. They should be better on both sides of the ball with a extremely experienced quarterback. This is actually his fifth year starting. He has the COVID year, year five. He's seen everything. He's been in big games before. He's played in the biggest Pac-12 games. He's going to be throwing for, you know, 35, 4,000 yards this season. And they're also going to be looking to run the ball. Miami has a very good offensive line, had, had a top 10 offensive line last season. They're going to be a lot better than when they had Tyler Van Dyke. They're going to be running, throwing, playing special teams. They have one of the best kickers in the country. This is going to be a tough matchup here. It was a very close game last season with Tyler Van Dyke hurt and out. And when he did play, he threw nonstop picks. This could go either way. This is a 50-50 matchup. This is potentially the closest matchup of the season. I'm going to go with Miami and Mario Cristobal getting the win here, knocking Florida State down to 6-2. They're at home. They're in Miami. They're... Mario Cristobal is finally going to get his signature win. If Miami was to ever have a great season and potentially compete for the playoffs, it is this season. They've thrown everything they have at the NIL and the transfer portal. Three straight top 10 recruiting classes, two straight top five classes, and they're also working the portal just like Florida State. Look for Miami to win this game in a somewhat close one. I'm going to say about a 30 to 23 game Miami wins Florida State six and two. Then Saturday, November 2nd, Florida State's pissed off right now. Six and two. They're talented. You have the North Carolina Tar Heels coming into Tallahassee. They don't have Drake May. They don't have Sam Howe. They have the transfer from Texas AM. I think it's Johnson. They're going to be taking a massive step back on the offensive side of the ball. And Florida State's going to be looking for revenge. They're going to put it on them. It's probably going to be like a 40 to 20 game. Florida State wins and they're 7-2. and two. And then Florida State with another tough matchup. Saturday, November 9th versus the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, who are probably going to be a top 10 team at this point. They have Riley Leonard coming in at the quarterback position. He's not a great quarterback, but he's definitely, you know, good. He's a pretty serviceable quarterback. He's going to be... Definitely scrambling, running a lot on the ground. Notre Dame, they always have a top 15 defense. Their defense is going to get after it, and they are in Indiana. They're at Notre Dame. This is going to be a tough game for Florida State to win on the road. I have Notre Dame winning this one in a really low-scoring matchup. You know, possibly like a 23-17, 23-20 game, a slug it out. 
defensively focused game. The game's going to be decided on the ground. And I'm going to go with Notre Dame as the more experienced roster this season, getting the win just because Florida State is breaking in a lot of first-year starters. I have Notre Dame winning, Florida State dropping to 7-3. and three. And then they have a bye week, which they need because they need to regroup. They're 7-3. and three. They follow that up with Charleston Southern. This game's at home in Tallahassee. Obviously, this game's not going to be close. Florida State's going to beat the crap out of them. Probably a 55-7 to seven win, and they're 8-3. and three. So, still ranked, never unranked the whole season. And then they end the season with one of the biggest rivalries in all of college football, Saturday, November 30th, versus the Florida Gators. This game is also in Tallahassee. FSU has a lot of home games this season. So, they have Florida coming to Tallahassee. Look at my Florida predictions video if you want to see how I predict they're going to do this season. Florida has the back-to-back toughest schedule in college football. They had the toughest schedule last season. They had the toughest schedule this season. They play, what, nine or ten ranked teams, four or five top ten teams. It's going to be a gauntlet. Billy Napier is on the hot seat. His seat is on fire. I don't think it's going to get any cooler this season. This is the last game of the year. Florida's just trying to get a bowl game, which they did not get last season. And if they don't, he's probably getting fired. I don't, you know, want that to happen, but you can't be the head of the Florida football program and miss out on bowls back-to-back seasons. That's just not going to work. Look for Florida State to win this one. I have everything going Florida State's way here. They want to get back to 10 wins. They want to win their ninth game here, potentially get to the ACC championship or a bowl game, get their 10th win. Florida's just trying to get a, just trying to get bowl eligible. But if they're not, if they're coming into this game at four wins and no matter what happens, they don't get a bowl, they have nothing to play for and things could be unraveling. I have Florida State winning this one decently comfortably, probably about a 34 to 20 game. I have Florida State finishing the regular season 9-3, and three, still in line for the ACC championship. They only have two in-conference losses. Notre Dame doesn't count. Whoever wins your conference, you still get in the playoffs. Florida State can still, you know, finish the ACC championship, finish 10-3, and three, get into the college football playoff nonetheless, get back to where they were last season. They still have everything in front of them. The Notre Dame loss doesn't count at all. If you win your conference, you get in and you get a bye week. So everything's still in front of Florida. That's 9-3 and three regular season is actually a pretty good finishing to your schedule considering the amount of talent you lost from last season's team and you're just retooling. Next season, they'll be 10-2 and two or 11-1 and because those guys will be in their second, third year starting. So Florida State finishes 9-3. and three, Really good shot. Really strong season for the Seminoles. Still a shot to get to the college football playoff and pick up where they were last season. That's my breakdown of Florida State's 2024 schedule. Hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any comments, drop them below, and I'll make sure to respond. Thanks.